Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm with Rich in the Atlanta, Georgia area, and we're taking a look at the ultimate LEGO castle layout. You might also see some amazing LEGO castle sets, so we'll have a separate video going through all of these castle sets as well. But right now we want to dive on into this insane layout that you have here in your house. So how long have you been working on this? This project I've been working on just about three years now. And ever since the start of COVID, I started working on this when uh, we moved into this house. It was a great, great start to a new project. And uh, yeah, so just about three years now. Awesome. I love I loved to see these ever-expanding projects like this. So we can start with kind of the castle section itself here. Tell us a little bit about kind of your approach to the castle here. Yeah, so I knew I wanted to put something on, you know, uh, some kind of rock mountain formation right at the edge of a water, you know, just waves hitting it and, you know, just mounted up real high. And so that's where I started with the keep. And uh, just, I knew I wanted a lot of towers. I wanted some depth in there, um, some details down below. And this is all built in below. So there's dungeons down there. There's a, you know, a throne room, a, you know, a treasure room and all that. And stairs lead everywhere. Uh, things you'll never see and things I'll never even be able to get to, <laughs> at, you know, at any point. But, you know, some of these compartments open up. Um, there's a lot of areas that are modular um, that you can see from the outside. Um, you know, there's a mini map of the, uh, the actual, the castle and then the mountain uh, behind it. It's a sort of war room. Um, and then I put some figures in here recently to kind of give it some life. Um, and as you work your way around, you know, the great room, and this is pretty much where you pretty much slice a map, the map with a knife right here. So this built, these are all cut and I pretty much sliced everything right down here. It's also a good place to put the uh, medieval market. Uh, to open that up but there's a, a food room down below an armory um, a kitchen um, and then just you know just sort of detail of uh, the life inside the keep and this is so well detailed here now did you build this with kind of transportation in mind or is this pretty much all one piece here and it's it's going to stay where it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah i probably shouldn't move it but um yeah it, i did have an idea in my mind to move uh real in my head was to move to another part of the house once this <laughs> once i ran out of room in this house which i'm really fortunate to have room in this in this room uh, for the you know for a good amount of space for mm -hmm. uh, for a kingdom uh, but yeah it was intended to be able to be moved uh, so each section in this entire build is modular by about two by three feet um, it gets sturdier as you move on in the beginning you know, was, I kind of got my skills up a little bit and I could see my own skills change as I built uh, from the keep and then got a little more detailed as I went on so it's kind of cool to see over three years how much you know how, how much further I've gotten for sure and as we make our way down, you start to see some of the buildings here. And I, I like your unique choice for the roof in this section. So how'd you decide with that color palette? Yeah, I just, um, I wanted something a little different. I wanted, uh, it's almost like I got the government buildings in red and, you know, dark red. And then everything else is in black and, you know, some oranges and browns. Um, I just wanted them to be a little different, feel a little different. And uh, most important to me, I wanted them packed, jam-packed real good and real tight. And I wanted to bring that scale down real small. For me, uh, when I started, uh, and I... I and still to this day, I, I, I want to build bigger, like as you, you know, you're building and you just by default, you know, you want a big room and a big house and you got to tell yourself, no, shrink it down. So you, so the scale looks a little better so you can kind of get more into uh, your area. So I really wanted to cram everything in real good, make it, you know, like a medieval town inside the walls and, um, you know, make it, uh, you know, like live, lively. What are some of the little details and scenes that you can point out here? Because I'm sure that's a big part of the, the building process and just the fun for you is bringing this all to life. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I wanted to build, you know, just the main area here where there's a nice little statue and people around or a church, always the focal point in medieval times. It's, you know, eventually I'll have dragons, so it can't be that realistic and there's gargoyles <laughs> and everything, you know, all this. But I wanted the church to be the focal point. It's up on the raised part of the town inside here. Um, you know, you have the the church people out there, and there's a cemetery. I wanted um, I wanted it to feel like you know, uh, like it was kind of realistic uh, as much as you could do with Lego, um, and then just make it lively. I wanted a street with you know some some fanfare and some shops, and I want a lot of people moving around. I want it to be interesting to look at something different on every street and every turn. Right. How did you decide which castle faction to kind of represent here in the fortress? Because you obviously have an immense uh, Lego castle mm -hmm. collection, so you had a lot to choose from. I did. Um, uh, Black Falcons are my favorite, but um, I always had the most lions. And actually, the best looking to me was always the red and white from the Kingdoms line. And so that's what I started with. <laughs> Unfortunately, side note, when they came out with the, uh, the, new, the new lines, they went back to the old style. So I had to kind of change my flags up a little bit because <laughs> that's where I knew I was going to get a lot more of my newer armies from. Um, but yeah, I knew I wanted to go Lions. I, I knew that would be the largest faction and, you know, I would have fun with smaller fortresses for some of the other factions. Now, are you a purist in your approach to the layout here? Or do you have any custom weapons or armor or anything like that? I, I was a purist, <laughs> um, but, you know, for a while, Lego didn't produce anything for us. And for years, we didn't have, 
you know, good peasants or good townspeople. It's been a struggle as a Lego <laughs> castle fan for some years. <laughs> it has. You know, you, there's only so many Jedi robes you can get in, <laughs> get in to mix up with the, you know, the three or four peasant outfits they had. So, you know, thankfully with the new castle, they've come out with some new ones. But um, I have backed it up with some K-Town bricks. They make some excellent minifigures and uh, some of the other companies, you know, make some, some nice things just to change it up, just to throw some, you know, something different in there just so you're not seeing the same peasant outfits. And of course, just throwing different arms and hats and beards and just trying to change everybody up as much as possible. But, you know, I also try to get different weapons from different companies, um, things that LEGO doesn't make. I won't, I won't get something that they make. Um, you know, I won't, you know, go get goats or whatnot or, you know, something. I Thankfully, I'm fortunate to have a couple of goats, but, um, Hopefully they'll have a few more here soon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And as we move outside the castle walls, we get into your immense mountain <laughs> section here. So this thing is just, just massive. Yeah. It's really mind blowing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's up on us. I'm almost six feet tall and this thing's, you know, coming up to us. Um, I just knew, I guess the, the idea behind this was it's hard and, and, you know, my brother always built town and in towns you just keep going. It's a street grid and you have, you know, your space is, is, is it works pretty well. But for a castle, you know, for me to have a castle here and another castle over there, it's, I would need to send this out into the woods <laughs> in my backyard. So I just tried to build something in between, you know, this group and another group, just so there's that, you know, artificial barrier. Um, so I knew I wanted this castle higher than any of my towers. Uh, just so for me, you know, I wasn't staring from one group to the other. So there'll be another faction on this side uh, just for separation. Um, and it just, I just kept going. I was originally gonna stop somewhere around here, but I just, I kept eyeballing those towers and I just wanted those peaks to be up above them. I really like your approach to this as well, where you've got more than just the gray. So you've got the, the white caps on top, which help kind of break it up a bit. And then all of this, is this the olive green pieces? Correct, in there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I wanted to, you know, and I try to stick them in little places where, you know, just for a little, make it a little interesting and then make those stop when the air gets a little thinner and then you got the snow. You know, you have to suspend the belief a little bit because again, they're the same height as the towers. I don't have snow on them, but um, I, it, it's interesting to look at. I really enjoy the depth of it when you start looking at a couple ranges and there'll be another range back here that'll be a little higher. Um, and so that that's interesting to the eye to me. And then I just put a little melted uh, ice back in here. Yeah, and the river actually runs kind of all the way down then as well. So it, it, it kind does. of continues throughout the whole mountain range. Yeah, and there's a sneaky little pass that runs through the mountain and comes out through the top, um, through one of the sections. It was intended to be, you know, a little area where, you know, forestmen or someone could sneak through, but it could be wolf pack if they're back here. Um, so I just wanted to make it a little interesting. And then there's a little cave in here for the new snow guardians that were made in the CMF line. You know, I'll put a couple of them in there, you know, toasting a turkey or something. <laughs> <laughs> and as we come to this side, you can kind of see how the magic happens, a bit of the structure. And this is always really cool to see. I think a, a lot of people who, you know, watch our videos from conventions always wonder, how is it that mm -hmm. people are able to make these massive structures? So you've got a combinations of different types of elements. What all do you have here? Yeah, so I use a Duplo to save money, <laughs> first and <laughs> foremost. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go and get bulk Duplo as much as I can. You, you never have enough of it with a you know mountain like this size or really anything you're building. Um, and so just for structural support, you know, the big plates work real well. Um, but yeah, there's a good skeleton system. And like you said, I always, I, I like to see as, you know, someone who's a fan of Lego, how do other people do it? You know, how do they build underneath? And, you know, I've tried to, you know, on my Instagram page, just kind of post updates and show people how I do it. Um, but there's a lot of different ways. And as you move away from it, as you start to move the next module, you, you're much more, you know, uh, better use of parts, right? There's a lot less, you know, as you're building inside there, you don't know how high you're going to go. So you keep building and building. Kind of cobbling it together. Yeah, as exactly. It yeah. yeah. You can see it kind of in there. Like I didn't know where it was going to end really. I wanted I, from the outside is the only way I can really tell. And then it stops and comes down. So as you get to these other sections, it's a lot better use of the parts. The thing that always cracks me up at shows is when people take the pick brick cups, which you can see you've got some over there, mm. and they'll stack them up. It's like hold part of the build <laughs> oh, up God. in the back. It always looks really precarious. Oh, man. I, but I guess it's purist because it's a pick brick cup, so it's, it still counts. It's official Lego, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with this section, what, what are your plans in terms of kind of expanding this? It looks like you've got ideas here for what you're going to add. Yeah, so the intention here is to finally stop this angle, right? So this will be the short side of the, the map for me, and so this will build up a mountain here. And my idea, my original idea was to have the forestmen back in here, uh, back on the back side of the mountain with a little lake um, where they were residing, this little meadow uh, back here as this water also melts down. So uh, it's getting a little tight for space. Again, my mountain got a little high, so I'm probably gonna have to cut this at a, at a pretty good angle and sharp and come down pretty sharp. So I think I can drop it in there. Um, I wanted to use the castle in the forest to drop in there, but I might have to modify, you know, exactly what I use uh, to get it to fit. But uh, that's the idea. And then these, these ranges will keep coming um, at these angles. 
Yeah. No, that's going to be very impressive. That's that's a really Thank neat you. idea. And then on on this side, what's what's your plans over here? It looks like you've got space for tables and you're continuing to expand. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep coming this way. Yeah. So the mountain range will keep coming at an angle. I like. Um, you know, when I start, you see a lot of 90 degrees there, and then I start to work on some angles. I really like in Lego when you start working on angles and turning things and getting off that grid. And a more natural look yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this range will keep coming at this angle out. Um, you know, this will be lower here in this river. It's going to cut at the same angle as the mountain. I try to keep it semi-realistic how land would have would have flowed, so the river will run parallel with that. Um, and then out here will kind of be the low country um, as we get out into... <laughs> other kingdoms and the farms and, and these other places um, sure. out there. And I'm always interested in people who have done really big builds like this. I'm sure you get a lot of repetition with all of the, the, the rock work and even some of the castle work and stuff. So what are some of the things you learned there in terms of with all that repetition still making it look kind of natural like we were talking about? Yeah, so I try to, like even on, like on the snow areas, I try to keep the snow where it would stay, you know, where it would not melt. So I try to, best as I could, uh, put them into the crevices, into the corners, um, and just keep the angles interesting as you're working your way up. Um, you know, I, I, I got a little too fancy with the smaller slopes there. I probably should, probably should have hit with the uh, the larger ones, but you're trying to work an angle back, and it was it was getting a little tricky for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, you try to keep that all in mind. Follow the big plan, you know, as you're working your way back. You have to take a step back every once in a while and just make sure it's going the direction you want it to go. And you've got a nice variety of some trees here. So you, I, I like this type here on the edge because it's it's mm -hmm. not a ton of parts. So it, it, you're able to fit it in a small area. Yeah, and you could put your nephews and nieces to work pretty well <laughs> when they come over and visit and give them a little Lego prize at the end. Um, yeah, I have I have put some placeholders in there. It's not a burnt out forest. Um, I, I have to build a lot more, but it gave me an idea at the time when I didn't have enough of the uh, the plant pieces. Those are great for just massive, um, you know, infill of trees. I, I like them because of the scale size too. Um, I don't want a pine tree that's that's too big. Um, nothing's too complicated at all in any of my trees. It's it's real simple because of the volume I have to make of it. Um, and then I did the same thing as I hopped the river. Uh, less of the bigger trees. You know, I, I I wanted to change a little bit as I worked my way through. And I, my intent is as I go through the through my kingdom here is the you know the topography will change and the types of vegetation will change too. And as we move across the river, you can see in this other section, you've got a, a little kind of band of knights moving through there in this really thick tree area. Yeah, yeah. It's a, my wife calls this the little hiking area. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a fun little bit. This whole module was fun. It was just really just natural. And I, it was, uh, I wanted a little cut through. Was, I, I used a little more snot building as I kind of did under the bridge, kind of where, you know, nature carved its way through the dirt. And it's a lot of, you know, uh, um, curved slopes running through there on snots. Um, just to make it look a little more natural, and it's just nice little gradual climb, and we'll get to a peak here a little bit, you know, with the, probably this next module, and it'll finally drop off into the low country for a little bit. With all of this landscaping, do you take inspiration from any particular places, maybe here in Georgia, or just like images you've seen online, or just kind of all your imagination sitting down with parts? Yeah, so I, it, it's it's probably from experience from, um, you know, from running around, you know, from Georgia. I grew up in New York, um, you know, upstate, I grew up in the city, but going upstate and visiting yeah. my, my family. Um, you know, seeing the country to me, you know, like an hour <laughs> north of the city, everything was out, you know, was country um, outside the city. Um, but, you know, it, it, yeah, you take all those pieces, you know, those things for the for nature, for the bridge. Uh, my inspiration came from the St. Charles Bridge in, in Prague. Um, I, I went there a few times. I, I was fortunate enough to work for, for a company that, that I traveled a lot for. And um, I, it doesn't look exactly like it, but the idea was to get some statues with a little curvature on where they come out um, and just that that little little tower portion in the front of it just to and it came I was very happy with how that bridge came out um, it's not you know super fancy super complicated uh, but for me I was very happy with it it's unique though I like that yeah when you look at the statues with those kind of rounded areas mm -hmm. it's 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 something a little bit different which is cool mm -hmm. and as we move into this other town portion then so you can see some similar design elements to what we saw earlier but kind of greatly expanded on and so much hustle and bustle happening here with <laughs> yeah. so many minifigures. So, so what is the general idea of this section? Yeah, so I was really excited to get here because the, the intent in the other town inside the castle uh, was just, you know, it was going to cut off real quick and you have to use your imagination. It was going to continue on, on you know, off the map. Here, I got to play the whole thing in the port town. And this is going to be a little bit more, not run down, but it's going to be a little different vibe, a little fancier in town uh, in here, you know, a little, little smaller 
homes and, and buildings and shops, but once again, the church was going to be the center of it for their own church, for this denomination over here. Um, I, I got to tell you, I was pretty happy as I was building around it and kept going. I was really pleased with the way that church was, was looking as I kept moving because it, it, it's the focal point everywhere I walk around and I look at this thing from all around the room and it's the way it should be, um, the way how the, the time was. It really stands out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I purposely made it a different color, maybe a little older, a little different time frame. They built this one as opposed to the one inside the castle, uh, maybe later on. And then I have little guard towers around and there's a wall that, you know, that separates the port from outside of town. And I just wanted a lot of little alleys and little angled roads and, and streets and, and things and a lot of people just pouring in. And, you know, I'm just going to look forward to building some ships and getting them in, you know, on the docks and seeing all that trade happen. I've started some of it, um, but I really want to emphasize that that trade coming into town with the different factions that had their own. Uh, to me, it was, you know, whether realistic or not, I wanted them to have their own little trade buildings. Um, you know, for some of the other factions that are friendly to the lines. Yeah, I like this blockhouse area here mm -hmm. as well. Kind of nice looking defensive structure that ties in nicely with all of the the road work and kind of landscaping sloping down to the beach. Yep. Yeah, and this will uh, this will be my shipyard, uh, my shipbuilding yard. And I use the um, <laughs> the goat boat as my my sizing my template for it. Um, so that fits here. It won't be that, but I'm going to build a frame of a ship just so it appears, you know, we're building, and we've seen these in other people's builds, and I just like that idea, like, that's where you, you know, you build it, you know, there's an observation area to make sure everyone's doing their thing, and, you know, I'll put some woodworking underneath here, and there's some, some more little shacks here where all the wood is stocked, where all the parts are for the boat, and, and that's where that'll be, and then, you know, you can slide them right out to the water, um, and then there'll be another tower right there, kind of to match the other side of the tower as the kind of bookends to the, uh, to the port town. And with all these little buildings in here, you've got them at crazy angles and placed all over the place. Mm -hmm. So do you build those separately and then kind of place them in there? Or are you kind of, do you have kind of the footprint of it down and you're, you know exactly where that's going to be? I have a pretty good idea. Yeah. You'll, on my Instagram page, it's, you'll see kind of, it's, it almost looks like a, um, a new ha a subdivision. You can kind of <laughs> see some lots coming in, uh, but I have to do it because I got to know where I'm going to need to drop some tiles in because every one of these I can lift out. Um, I can lift out the second floor, they're all modular, and then I can lift the whole thing out if I need to. Um, and then all of them, they're not furnished, but every one of them has their wood floors, a fireplace. Um, um, they're just missing their furniture. Just waiting for their, their buyers to come in and uh, move into the neighborhood. <laughs> but, uh, they, um, yeah, so I, and I wanted them on angles. Again, you know, speaking to that whole get off the, the grid kind of thing, the 90 degrees, I want them to be angled roads. And I just love to stick my head down in here sometimes and just look down the streets and look at them curved down and up and around and just make it look like, you know, to me, you know, as a child and growing up with Lego, everything was 90 degrees. And um, it, this is just more interesting to me and just try to challenge myself a little bit, you know, as I'm building it. Yeah, that's always good. And I'm sure with a project that's gone on years like this, you're always looking for ways to kind of push yourself creatively. And, mm -hmm. you know, what can I try next? What, what can I do that really kind of continue to up the ante yeah. here? Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. And again, there's been, it, uh, I consider most people better than me in building, but for me, it's I'm trying to build uh, the volume here. Um, I, I get a little impatient. I want to keep going, keep going. <laughs> I try to keep them interesting. I'm trying to keep every building unique. I've tried not to do any color combination the same between two, whether it be, you know, the Tudor and the, and the wood color and, and then the window color. I just, I want every one of them to be different. I don't want to sit here and say, hey, look, there's the same one over there. I I've tried to make everyone different now. I'm sure someone will find something that's <laughs> identical, but I've I tried just tried to separate that so it's really interesting, especially on the, the, the crown building. Make them a little bit more posh, you know, a, a red brick and um, you know a little bit more of a more stature there on some of the buildings, on some of the factions that have their you know their trade buildings here. Right. Do you know how many minifigs are in the whole layout right now? Uh, so the count I do know is up in the towers in the main castle area. There's about 100 figures uh, just guarding the towers and the walls, which I, I, my, my mind was blown when I put them all out because I never th I thought I'd use like 30, 40 maybe. It adds up way quicker than you oh, think they, always. They it's go, amazing. <laughs> they go so fast. Um, I've, uh, it's probably, I had 200 townspeople and I used all but about 15 of them uh, to fill in both these sides. But then I made an extra 20 the other morning. So, I mean, I've, I've probably 200 plus townspeople in here and then between those, the soldiers there and here, I, we're probably talking, you know, a good 250 of them. Yeah. So I, I've probably probably got a good 450, almost 500 figures in here right now. Yeah, yeah. And that's, but that's what makes it so much fun to look mm -hmm. at and capture all yeah. those details as well. Yep. Do you try to keep track of the overall piece count in the layout as you go along? I know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I couldn't even imagine. Um, even in that first section, I 
there's no way I could even engage that. Um, I'd, I'd be off. You'd probably have a better idea than I would. Um, <laughs> you've, you've seen a lot more than I have. I mean, I, tens of thousands, but I, I have no clue. Yeah, yeah. I think you're easily in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> <laughs> My wife definitely knows there's that many coming through the house every week between brick length. She and... actually keeps track of everyone. <laughs> yeah, she probably does. Yeah, the um, yeah the the brick link orders and the uh, the the bricks and pieces and pab orders just keep coming through. It's you you can't ever stop feeding this if if it's uh, you know your love like this. So is the plan just to go basically until you run out of the table space here in the room? Is that pretty much the overall plan? Yeah, right now it's yeah to fill out this room. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I keep having to add tables. Uh, and this next section will here be kind of wrapping up the port and the shipbuilding yard. And then the farms will come in, which I've kind of been looking forward to building some farms and some lower lying buildings and some windmills and things like that out here. And then uh, as we hit that peak on the little hill here into the low country, there'll be a little tournament area back in here. And then uh, my mind hasn't even gotten to the rest. I know that I'd like to get as many factions as I can in here. Um, again, I'm fortunate enough to have a basement, which is much larger than this room. Um, so when the time comes, um, uh, it'll have to move. <laughs> oh, okay. So then we'll get, we'll get a big move to the basement and That's continue <laughs> to expand that. We'll have to return that and That's right. <laughs> look at it again. <laughs> Now, one, one thing I know people always wonder with these big layouts, whether it's a city layout or something like this in people's houses, is how you're able to kind of keep this all set up. And I noticed you've got these tables here. This one is kind of sitting a little yep. bit lower. So mm -hmm. what are some of the, the struggles of trying to keep this all kind of relatively, you know, flat? Yeah, so you can see it right there. I, you know, all these tables were bought at the same time from the same place. So you, I thought I would have been in luck. Yeah. Uh, not so much. You can see it right here. Like you mentioned, this table is much lower than that. So I've got a couple plates here uh, keeping that one propped up. You can see over in the in the river there, you know, there's a difference in height. So I've tried to get the modular modules to kind of stop at those points and then drop the next one down. So the basement, so the next spot I do will be all tables built to one height um, and to make sure that they're they're sturdy enough. <laughs> someone we had a peach lug meeting here and someone had asked, you know, are you worried about this thing? <laughs> I had never even thought about it. I said, Well, thanks, now I am worried about it. <laughs> um, but I, I think these will hold up pretty well. I've I've stood on them myself. So there you go. <laughs> now you have another build I wanted to mention over here as well. So this is a smaller castle build, a little bit more mm -hmm. mobile. This one was actually on display at the recent Atlanta BrickCon yep. convention that we were at as well. And we've posted some videos from that show. If people want to check those out and see uh, what that show was like. But tell us a little bit about kind of your approach with this build. Yeah, so I just, I wanted to start with the three-in-one uh, castle. I wanted to keep that, that motif, that, that style there alive and not really deviate much from the front. So the, uh, uh, the front of it is pretty much three in one castle changed up to make for me to, to look like the, the Black Falcons Fortress from when I was a kid. So I changed all the navy blue to black and changed a couple of wall pieces, probably things you probably won't see, but there's a couple little nuggets um, changed up, just tweaked a little bit. And then I just went backwards and built them a little fortress around that. Um, so I wanted some towers on different angles. Um, I got to play more with, with uh, details on this one um, than the large one, because being you know focused on this smaller build, I got to to add more detail, slow myself down a sure. little bit, and uh, so it was more enjoyable. So this is definitely more detailed, more interesting to look at than than even the um, you know the keep of the other one. Um, you know, again, this all goes inside. There's nice throne rooms, and this is decorated nicely inside with tiles and and you know in rooms and an armory down below. And you know, I added more um, more interesting flowers and and plants to this one, um, keeping the same style then. Then for the show, I made it a, uh, you know, a little orc battle um, for them coming into the Black Falcons and a little wizardry and, you know, um, yeah. and whatnot. The battle element here is what caught my eye when I saw this at the show. I remember mm -hmm. walking by it and seeing these, like, flaming projectiles <laughs> coming in. It's not looking good for some of those defenders no, there. No. And that's exactly what my wife said when I, when I first had this built. It was just, I had the, uh, the, you know, the catapulted rocks, flaming rocks coming in. And she said, well, these, these guys are toast. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. There's no doubt about it. Everyone's, everyone's dead. So I threw the wizard in at the very end. I was like, oh, okay. So maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe the wizard can stop them. Um, so, so there's a chance they could survive. And then um, there's something else that was funny. I had this, this, this spear being shot mm -hmm. out and um, you know, I had all smoke. I was like, this almost looks like a missile being launched. So I, I toned that down a little bit, but I still wanted to overdo it a little bit. Just make it look like there's shots being fired both ways and the little, you know, catapult shot with a stone uh, going towards the orcs. Yeah. No, no, I got to have fun with that one. Yeah. It's a very fun build. And 
Now I wanted to turn to your wall of parts over here because none of these amazing builds that you do would be possible mm -hmm. without a massive collection of parts to pull from and a very well organized collection. Yeah. So I know people always love to see kind of the behind the scenes of builders collections. So mm -hmm. if you can maybe just start at one end and we can kind of work through a little bit of your approach to the way you organize and sort your collection and the way that you've kind of built this up over the years. Yes, so right off the bat, I have OCD. So <laughs> this is very enjoyable to me. Um, I, I've mentioned to many people over, over, the, over the years, I enjoy putting parts away and parting things out as much as building. That's why I don't have a big backlog of parts. My parts go right away. Um, I enjoy stocking up. Um, so I start with, I do it by part and part type and color. So okay. they're broken up by colors. Um, some of the colors like blue have a, have a few, but they're, you know, my one by one um, uh, plates, one by two. So I know every one of them, I'm gonna go one by one by one by eight on the top rows, pretty much. Browns gets a little tough or some other colors that I have a lot of. Um, and then they run into tiles and then, you know, circular tiles and then, you know, wedge plates and then they work their way down towards, you know, snot, you know, this, that or whatever. And then the bricks are up top. But I know in my head, you know, if I'm gonna look for a black, you know, two by six, it's gonna be in the second row and I could just spin around and, and grab them. Um, it, it's, it's easy for me. And, you know, after, a, you know, a couple of months, you, you know right where everything is. Um, you kind of have the parts library memorized a little bit as yeah. time goes on. Yeah, the unfortunate part is Lego keeps coming out with new parts. Well, it's good, right? Lego comes out with <laughs> new parts, but you, you try to new part proof yourself. So I have these bulk bins up top. So anything that's that's too plentiful down here, I I overflow to the to the bulk parts. So you know, if you go to a pad wall and, and get a lot of parts, you know, like these two by four, you know, slope red slopes, I put them up there just to get them out, and then that get, buys me some more room. But it's uh, <laughs> it's getting tight again. <laughs> And then my bricks roll up top, which is, you know, which is really easy if I'm building like a terrain or something, I need dark tan at all. You know, the one by twos through one by sixes and, um, you know, so on and so forth. So the browns one, one by ones and all of my bricks. This way I could just grab one slot out and if I'm building in that color, um, you know, slide them on over. Yeah. And what, what are the, the brands or types of shelves that you use here? Yeah. So these are Craftsman. Um, I had some earlier, I forgot the name of those, but Craftsman are available at Lowe's, these, these parts bins. And they have decent prices. They're available for about $20, $25 a piece. Um, but the good thing is you have these, the small bins and the, and the larger bins, but you can also get uh, just the small bins or just the large bins, which, which is nice when you're in like an area back there in the left corner where John's at, you can kind of see, you know, the small parts and you just want all little small bins. Um, it kind of helps break them off, um, break them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the top, these are from the container stores, the larger ones. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but I, I could see through them. Uh, they're pretty sturdy. They don't come flying out, and um, I like the way they sort real well. You can you, know, you can expand them. I can have that be all one piece, or like I do, break it up by five. That works really well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just love to look at the array of colors as you move down. So you've got like greens, your yellows and oranges, blues, reds, and then you know some some black and white. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have a lot of gray as well. Uh, yep. I'm sure that comes in handy with all the castle buildings. Yeah, these are like this is where I'm, I'm building most of the time. And I spin around, and my main colors right here: light gray, dark gray, brown. You know, the nougats, the tans. Uh, this is what I use mostly, um, and they're right here. And then the funky stuff is over on the right. Um, there's some fruits, you know, the the vegetables, some some animals, and some containers. And there's a little extra room down there to expand. Uh, of course, you, you. I mean, everybody needs a drawer full of you know pigs. pigs. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, those who are on the uh, the BAM. Uh, BAM stations there for a while. So uh, if you were lucky enough to have a store, it allowed you to get, you know, full of pigs, you can fill it up. And then some more overflow in the pick a brick cups here, very large quantities of some of these parts. Yeah, plants, uh, foliage is, it, you know, it's big for most people, except for space people, I guess. But <laughs> anybody who's building town or, you know, our castle fantasy, you know, we're, we're going to build a lot in vegetation. So um, pretty much anytime I see them, I, I grab um, leaves and, and plants and whatnot, flowers. Yeah. This is absolutely fantastic here. So you've done a great job setting this whole room up. Thank you. Uh, oh, I also wanted to give a shout out real quick to these really cool shields over there. So you've got like a, the brick built one in the middle and then where are those other ones from? Yeah, so these are from Brick Monarch Shop. They, they create some awesome shields um, from the old factions. Uh, they're, they're metal, they hang up on the wall real easy. Um, I didn't have a problem doing them at all. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. And then they were kind of worked real well with my little SIG shield I made, um, hashtag SIG shield. <laughs> um, they, um, yeah, it worked real well. Then, um, I guess I, you know, a lot of people were interested in them. I was telling them where to go and, um, you know, Brick Monarch Shop made me a, um, my own little SIG shield, um, version of theirs over here on the right hand side, um, which looks just like my, my Instagram, uh, emblem. Yeah. And I wanted to mention that real quick as well, because I know you've mentioned kind of 
updates on Instagram a couple times now in the video. So talk a little bit about kind of what you do over there and the, the community there and if people want mm -hmm. to follow your work online. Yeah, I started on Instagram just looking at other people's builds, um, you know, looking what what people build in specifically castle and, and fantasy areas. And uh, so I'm intense bricks on Instagram. Um, and you can see I just build castle um, and I provide updates probably every couple days on my build specifically on weekends um, kind of updates on what I'm doing what I'm building what the you know new area or the new parts I'm getting in I just you know put a new one up today um, and, and I've always found those interesting because I like to see what parts people are getting what's available and it triggers me to say oh shoot you know that's available now or you know you can get this um, so I just try to share that with my community yeah, that's really cool. We'll make sure to put a link in the description to your Instagram then so people can click that link, check out your work and follow along because there's a lot more that's gonna be added here. <laughs> so hopefully we'll return Absolutely. in the future for an update video awesome. as well. But definitely uh, check out the Instagram page and all the cool progress updates there. Thank you so much for taking us around and Absolutely. showing us the build and some of your parts here. Thank you, thank you for coming.